Welcome back to 843 TV. I'm now joined by the city manager of the city of Beaufort, Bill Prokop. Bill, thank you very much for taking some time with me today. Thank you for having me. Appreciate Absolutely. It. So we're, uh, you know, maybe a, a couple of weeks, a week or so after a big storm hit uh, the city of Beaufort. And this was your first time working through a, a hurricane as city manager. Correct. Um, can you tell our viewers what it's like in the emergency operations center uh, leading up to the storm? Well, I think there's, I have to split that in half. Okay. There was the county emergency management center, which we're part of. Okay. And then we had our own emergency management center it set up in our police department. Okay. So there, there's a, there is a distinction. Sure. The <laughs> county one, which basically was looking out, and properly so for the whole county, was manned by police, fire, uh, every discipline from all of the towns in the co uh, county, or most of the towns, I should say. And w basically what, what we did as the city is we had our mayor stay at the county EOC, and I spent most of my time at the our own EOC with our department heads as to what we had to get done. Okay. But uh, the big difference for me coming out of New England, it, I didn't have to worry about snow and ice. <laughs> right, right, but, yeah. But we were worried, obviously, about wind and flooding. Sure. Uh, but I think the the nice thing for me was how prepared our departments were to handle the storm. Very cool. So we were we were pleased with that. Great. And are those pretty much across the street from each other? Is the county? Yes. Okay. That's correct. <laughs> it's at the sheriff's headquarters. Okay. Yes. Great. Um, okay. And so obviously, you know, um, there was some damage caused by the hurricane. Uh, a lot of trees down. I saw. Correct. Um, but it could have been worse. Could have been much worse. Yeah. What areas of the city of Beaufort do you think were the hardest hit? There's two areas that were the hardest hit: is the Royal Oaks and the Mossy Oaks area. Okay. Uh, we had, we will have when we're done with all the assessment. As of yesterday, we had just over 180 homes were affected. Okay. And probably by the time we're done, it'll be close to 200. About 30 to 35 of those are homes in Mossy Oaks, or uh, Royal Oaks. And again, it's a combination of trees or flooding issues. But that's the the major area. The rest was spread out all over the city. Okay, okay. And then, you know, talking about trees, uh, Beaufort's a tree city. <laughs> and we all take great pride in our live oaks and the other trees in the uh, area. Overall, what's the condition of Beaufort's trees? Well, it's kind of interesting uh, because obviously just driving around, A, you'll see a lot of debris alongside the road and a lot of trees down mm -hmm. and, and a lot of trees not in the position they should be in <laughs> right. or on the <laughs> roofs. But the interesting thing, on live oaks, as of yesterday, we only had two live oaks knocked down. Really? The all, all 98 percent, or I shouldn't say 98 percent, but a very high percentage of the trees down are laurel oaks. Okay. Or pine trees. Okay. So, but our live oaks, I believe it's two. I'll stretch it. Maybe we have three. Mm -hmm. So, with the hundreds and hundreds of trees down. Our live oaks did well. Resilient. And still strong and standing. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, okay, so now that we're a couple but, of weeks. But if I may add one thing too. Please, please. For safety for our audience, like right now, even at City Hall in the parking lot, you can look at a tree that looks really healthy. But if you walked around the back, you looked at the tree, the only thing holding it up is the bark because there's no inside. We're waiting for that tree to be taken down. So a lot of people are seeing trees come down after the storm right. because of water weight or just the wind because the limbs that were maybe holding that tree up, leaning against another tree, are gone. Sure. So just please be careful. Absolutely. That, Exercise some caution. Yeah, I've seen some trees that are down with like big holes in the, correct. In the trunks and they're just not as sturdy as they appear to that be. That is correct. Um, okay, that's good, that's good info. Um, so we're a couple of weeks into the recovery. and. Uh, now, you know, as we move forward, uh, what do you see as our biggest challenge or the city's biggest challenge? Uh, the biggest challenge mm -hmm. is, is first, I'll, I'll say a positive part, that the stormwater work we've been doing over the last few years has paid off because we didn't have flooding mm -hmm. on many streets that we used to have flooding immediately, no matter what size the tide was. So we have to, A, continue to do that work and find new areas. And the also be sure that we're following up on the requirements, people in flood zones, et cetera, that build to the proper heights, the pr proper equipment, et cetera. 
but stormwater is, is, is really important to us going forward. And also our biggest area and biggest concerns are where we had a lot of damage that's not fully visible yet, but our marina mm -hmm. and the waterfront park. Right. Um, because again, many people don't realize the waterfront park is not just a bunch of dirt with grass on the top and flowers, but it's really built on piers and there's water underneath it. So yeah. <coughs> we saw a great deal of damage on our docks and we see uh, uh, the pavers again giving out, which means it's giving way underneath. So we really have to look at and the challenge is making sure we're uh, supporting and, and building up our marina and making sure that it's fine and our waterfront park. Sure, yeah, that's that area right there in front of the Beaufort River, right? That, that's, that's kind correct. of the iconic center of the downtown Beaufort right there. Exactly. And that's an interesting uh, construction. People actually get down in, in, in scuba gear and check that out, right? Underneath that's correct. The, underneath the waterfront park. Exactly. And we look to look forward to few, for, further updates on that. Um, and I, I found it interesting that you find the stormwater runoff. You know, that's one of those elements that was even part of the Boundary Street Reconstruction Project that was so important was the stormwater runoff. And it's incidents like these that really uh, reinforce the importance of that, right? It shows you what's working and what's not working. <laughs> right. And again, Going back to the areas most damaged, the most damaged in both Mossy Oaks and Royal Oaks wasn't just trees, but it was stormwater issues coming from the ponds or from, from the marsh. Right. So that's an area that we, and those are major projects. It's not something that, well, we can start today and it'll be done in a week sure. and a half. So hopefully with the funding that should become available with the FEMA and stuff, there may be some grants to offset that because for proper stormwater in those areas, you're looking at probably several million dollars sure. of work. And that's a whole other challenge that we'll get into in another program, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, so I know that you know a lot of our viewers, and I'm sure you, you and some of your staff are experiencing a little bit of hurricane fatigue, but uh, just um, you know, looking forward or looking back, um, if you were to you know, adjust your, your you know, what would you do differently if preparing the city and, and then with the recovery for, uh, you know, all these are learning lessons. And so how well, would you do it differently? I, I think there's, there's a few things. Um, from what I'm told from people who have been here for years, uh, a great job was done on the evacuation compared mm -hmm. to the evacuation that took place several years ago on the last major flood. And changes were made and the evacuation went very smoothly. Yeah. We were not prepared totally the way we should have been for the recovery or the return. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at that and say, how could we make it better? Right. Uh, what has to be done? What considerations do we have? The other thing that we're getting input from the public is uh, we need to do more outreach through social media of what's going on. And there were, I think, confusing stories of different people putting different things out mm -hmm. throughout the county or the state. Right. But we have to have a very active pre presence on social media our fire department did an excellent job. I think they had several hundred thousand hits. Okay. They ended up with 1,200 new followers So <laughs> in that short days of the storm. Yeah. So we have to do more of that. But the other thing is our public, our, our citizens, have to really look at their insurance policies and not only look at them but understand them because in ta having people call us and talking, they're shocked at their deductibles. Yeah. And we so basically... Our, our people just have to educate themselves mm -hmm. on what they have, where we live is a possibility of floods or storms, make sure you have the proper insurance. And the other thing that we've been trying to work very hard with and, and is the human side of this mm -hmm. as to our biggest concern is the people that we don't hear from. Right. And people that may need help, but for some reason uh, they are afraid to contact us because they think they're going to have to get a permit mm -hmm. or whatever, or they're proud or whatever it is. So right now we're trying to do everything to reach those people. We're working with the Red Cross, United Way, the county, everybody. We want to be sure that if somebody needs help, whether that's food stamps, a tree on their roof, uh, help cleaning their yard, that we know who they are. So we've been asking every person that we come in contact with through our social media, if you know somebody, please tell us. because. The people could be really in need, but they don't know where to turn, right. and we want to be able to help them. It's not necessarily the city's responsibility, but it could be that they they are eligible for funding from one of our social agencies or the churches or anybody. So 
we're all trying to work together to make sure that someone's not left behind. And right, you can't help them if, they, if you don't know. Exactly. Well, Bill, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. And uh, mm. we, were, we were lucky and that yeah, the storm did the damage that it, mm. limited damage that it did. And we really appreciate the work that all our first responders, public works did, but also we thank the citizens for being patient with us. Absolutely, and thank you for your staff for a job well done. And, and thank you for watching 843 TV, where communities come to speak.